Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna take a look at design options in Revit, which is a really useful tool for developing a project going forward with an iterative design flow. Uh, it allows you to show clients multiple design options, and then also it allows you to, uh, to work with, let's say an employer or a team and take them through what you're thinking in your Revit model without deleting or hiding a ton of stuff. So let's go into uh, let's go into it. So if you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up along the way, or subscribe if you haven't already to not miss other videos like this one. So we're gonna go and take a look here. Uh, this this building right now you'll see is designed so that way in the summer uh, it has a facade treatment that shades it, and then in the winter uh, it allows uh, a lot of that sun to come through and heat up the building with some radiant heat, some passive solar going on there. So we're gonna go into a 3D view here. And one of the things that we wanna do is, let's say explore some different facade treatments. Maybe the client might not like something like this, right? Um, or maybe just the engineering on it is, you know, just a little bit, um, a little too abstract. So we wanna come up with some other ways to show this building's solar shading, uh, some different design options. So we're gonna go up to the Manage tab here in Revit, and up here is Design Options. Uh, we're gonna go and click on that. So right now, we don't have any. Uh, it just uses our main model as what's showing. Um, so we're gonna click on a new option set, and we're just going to rename that to uh, Facade Solar shading and we have our option one primary uh, we'll go and create a few new options so I'm just gonna go and say new down here for option and these create some sub options I would think of the option set as the different regions of the building so one could be the solar shading the other could be floor treatments the other could be roof treatments whatever you want to do to break up the project and then think of these sub options as how you're going to address those regions um, I would err on the side off the bat of just making more than you're going to need and then go and delete out the ones that you don't want. It's easier to copy and, pa copy and paste between them all if you have them all set up ahead of time. So I'm going to just go and probably do some work with option two today, but I wanted to just show you that it's easier to make a bunch right off the bat. So now that we have this, um, let's go and work with an option two, right? So option two means that we have, since I have nothing selected, nothing copied into option two, it's a blank slate, everything kind of grayed out. Maybe we want design option one primary to be what was currently there. So we would actually have to go to main model. We would select both of these by holding down control. And then we're gonna go up to manage. And then we're going to say add to set. And we can copy it just straight to option one. Now, if I knew I was for sure going to have that, but maybe just different variations of it, I could throw it into like maybe option two as well, right? Just to show you an example. So I'm gonna say, okay. So now I can go to option one primary. Okay, so we have these two in option one. Then let's say I went to option three, I should see none of them, right? Because those are only in option one and option two. If I go to option two, let's see what happens when I adjust this. So I'm gonna go and click on this. This was made as like a roof by extrusion. So I'm just gonna edit the profile on this. And let's just go and shrink this thing up. So uh, I'm just gonna go and drag it, or actually align it to, let's say like that middle mullion right here. And check that off. So now I have one, and then let's just say, I wanna just copy and paste it over to create some kind of rhythm in the design. Maybe something like this. So I could do something along this line uh, for my design options. Maybe I'm gonna play with these heights a little bit. So edit, edit profile. I think you kind of get the idea. I won't spend too much time on this. So something like this. So then now I can say, okay, option one, do you like that? Option two, do you like that? Even better, what we could do is we can go and throw on the shadows and we can get a sense of how these different design options uh, affect the performance right, of the building. Um, so it's, it's really kind of a useful tool. Then if we go into, let's say option three, I can go and let's say do like a vertical louvered facade. Um, if you don't want to see that, just fast forward, but I'm just gonna spend just a tiny bit of time uh, modeling it as like a generic component. So I'm gonna go into architecture, components, model in place. Let's go and just make it a generic model and say, okay, generic model one, okay. 
and then let's just pick a, uh, a work plan. So we'll set our work plan and we'll pick a plan. Okay, and let's just go and pick the roof. And then from here, we'll just go and model that as an extrusion and we'll grab it right on the face and we'll come off the building. Let's just say two feet and come over 90 degrees from that let's just say yeah let's go four inches and let's return back into the building and back over and now that we have this we could just check it off but we could say extrusion start is going to be negative uh, two feet and then the extrusion end is going to be negative uh, i forget how high this building is but let's just say 14 feet and apply and check and now we have it and okay maybe i want it to be a little a little bit longer and we'll go and just slide that down and so it's not a weird number let's just call it a negative 23 feet and then we just want to array this so we'll just array this extrusion um let's see to the last spot and we'll make that over here and then we want there to be uh oh we need to do that again extrusion <laughs> to the last spot from here to here we could be doing this in a plan view as well and let's just say we want there to be eight okay so we have something like this and maybe i, I messed up where i clicked so we could do we could be doing that in let's say a level one plan that'd be a little bit nicer for control so we'll just undo that for just a moment, click on this guy, and once again, we'll do that extrusion the correct way. So we'll do to the last, so it's gonna start here, and it's gonna end like right over here, and let's just do our eight again. Okay, finish model. So then now let's go to that, that winter view. All right, that looks kind of cool. And then we can go and take this, and let's go back to level one and we'll just copy and paste that over. So we'll just copy it, kind of paste it close. And then we'll do a, uh, a line tool from here to here. And that's pretty good. We can just kind of nudge it over with the arrows. If I go up and over the same amount, I should be keeping it pretty much aligned. If we get off our alignment, once I get a little bit more in position, we can just go and snap that. And we could also just lock it to kind of help with that. Okay, so now let's see if we did this correctly. So we have this, these uh, louvers in the Manage tab under Option 3. We have Option 2, and then we have Option 1. And once we have a direction that we want to go, let's say it's Option 3. Let's say that's what the client likes. We could go and just bring that in to our main model. So to show you how to, uh, well, I'll show you at the end how we would just go and infuse that into the main model. Um, let's get into plans though. So this floor plan right now uh, is showing option three. If I wanted to print out though, all these floor plans, I have option one, option two. These are hard to notice that they are there because of, we're in a plan. And then option three, let's say I wanted to like make sure that I was able to show all of them, no matter which one I had picked up here, we can do that. So I'm going to go and duplicate uh, option one, duplicate with detailing. And here I'm going to call it, uh, well, I'm just going to rename it to level one option, option one. And so up here then, I would just go and make that option one, uh, just to, to kind of make uh, this sequential. And then down here, under the view template, I'm gonna edit the, uh, I can either make a new view template and make a setting for it, or I can just make the setting here in this view. So I'm gonna go VG on my keyboard. And then the design option tab is all the way on the right. And instead of being automatic, which chooses what you have selected up here, we can say, let's just show option one in this view. Uh, I'm not gonna do option two for the sake of speed here. I'm just gonna go to straight to option three. So let's duplicate with detailing. And then let's call this one rename level one option, uh, option three. And so we'll do the same thing, VG on the keyboard. And under design options, we wanna just show option three on this plan. 
So this allows us, no matter what we have picked up here, right? Um, it's going to still show only option three in this plan view. So that's kind of nice. So then I can go into option one. This one only has option one. Uh, level one option three is only going to show option three. And then my level one that I copied originally from is on automatic, which means it's going to just update with whatever I have picked on my design options. Okay, cool. So now let's say we have all of that done and now we want to commit, right? We want to commit to one. Um, maybe our model's getting a little messy with tons of options. We've already made decisions. Let's clean it up. So uh, what I'm going to do here under my design options, I'm going to click on that menu. I have to say finish editing. Now I have to turn, let's say we like option three the most. I'm going to click on make primary. So now option three is primary. Then what I could do is I can go to the top of the design options set and I could say accept primary. Now be cautious with this. Revit recommends that you save as and save a version before you adopt the primary in case things don't work the way you uh, anticipated. So I'm going to just say accept primary on it. I'm going to say accept primary. Uh, once again, make sure you save your work as like another file type, uh, another file name before you do this, just so you can revert back to it in the future if you needed to. Uh, so it's just saying, hey, it's going to you know, delete some things, some views of other design options that were created, like our option one that I had made before. So yeah, go ahead and delete that because that option no longer exists anymore. And now we don't have any design option sets because we've adopted option three now as part of the main model. So now we're only working with the main model once again. And so this can occur as you design in Revit for every part of the design process, which is kind of cool. So uh, keep in mind that this can become part of your workflow, whether it's just you for your own process of just being able to analyze different ideas uh, as you create, or it could be something that you use to help you uh, show to a, a client or a presentation, or let's say a professor, if you're, if you're taking a, a college course on architecture in like a studio class, or you could be doing this, um, you know, for, uh, for an employer, you know, who wants to check your work, or maybe you're going the main route, but you also have some ideas on your own. This allows you to update your model without uh, drastically uh, changing your workflow. All right, I hope you liked the video. Make sure to give it a like. Make sure to subscribe, share it with friends if you think it was useful, and I'll see you all later. Take care.